Hi and welcome to the channel Love of Obstetrics and Gynecology. This video is related to the CG balloon or the Chhattisgarh balloon. That is an intrauterine balloon tamponade which is used for the management of atonic PPH that is postpartum hemorrhage. It was developed by Dr. Professor Nalini Mishra and her team in the state of Chhattisgarh and hence it was named as CG balloon. So this balloon is very effective cost effective in relation to the already available balloons in the market that were Bakri balloon. It has all the benefits of the Bakri balloon but it is very much cost effective from that balloon. So now let's make this CG balloon. For a condom catheter we require a sterile sheet and bowl with some NS, a pair of scissors, a catheter which ideally should be of 22 number but I have a 16 number. You can make it on any catheter and some syringes and a condom. So the first step is to inflate the balloon. So we are going to inflate our balloon with the air and then I am going to puncture it. So through this inflating port, this orange one you can see, I am going to inflate it with air like this. Now the balloon is inflated and now I am going to puncture this balloon. See? So like this. The balloon gets punctured. And now excise the area of this balloon. So now I have excised all around the balloon. The next step is we roll the condom over this catheter. So now we have put our condom over this catheter. The next is we have to secure the two ends of this condom. For that I will require rings and that rings are to be excised from the drainage port. So now I have cut two rings from the drainage board and now tie it at two ends, one end over here and one just below this eye. You can see this eye and just below this eye is where I am going to place the rings. So you take the ring, you just stretch it over your hand and then you insert like this. And then double fold it like see now this end is secured now coming to the other end see the next ring is placed between this excised balloon and between over here So now I have effectively placed it between here and here. Now next is you cut the tip of this balloon. So now this, see this balloon is ready to be used. See, now this is where we have to check the balloon. So now through this port, this inflating port, I am going to put some NS. So I will require a 20 cc syringe. So fill it with some NS. Now after filling it with NS I am going to check on both ends there should be no leakage. So there is no leakage even on inflating. Right. So now coming on to the inflating port, this is the inflating port from where you can fill the NS and the balloon will get filled and this is the draining port from which the intrauterine blood can drain and you can attach it to a Eurobag. So this is all about a 
on the catheter how to make it the mechanism of this cg balloon is basically uh, to get inflated inside the uterine cavity and then press on the uterine walls and stop the bleeding regarding the insertion for the insertion you require same speculum and some sponge holding forceps with the sponge holding forceps first clean the perineum and the inside of vagina so that a sterile environment can be maintained the next is you retract the posterior vaginal wall with the same speculum and then catch your anterior lip of the cervix so that the os is clearly visible and through that os you pass your cg balloon into the intrauterine cavity after that pack the vagina with the gauze and secure your cg balloon and then you can inflate your cg balloon see maximally you can go till 500 ml but usually 200 to 300 ml is quite enough while inflating we keep on assessing two things that is supra pubically the tone of the uterus and we also have our eyes on the drainage port and that drainage port is actually telling you how much amount of blood is coming through the intrauterine cavity as you keep on inflating your balloon the tone will keep on increasing and the blood blood that was coming from the intrauterine cavity that keeps on decreasing and at a point it stops and that usually happens between a range of 200 ml to 300 ml which is sufficient to stop a atonic pph so you should know something about the deflation of this balloon which is usually done after 12 to 24 hours of the insertion we begin with this process and we do not deflate rapidly we do it as 50 ml per 30 to 60 minutes so for example if i have inflated it to 200 ml and then i deflate 50 ml so 150 ml is left and then i observe the patient for 30 to 60 minutes whether from the drainage port any blood is coming from the intrauterine cavity in case no blood comes then again deflate it by 50 ml and like that so on you deflate the balloon completely in case at any point of 50 ml deflation the blood comes from the intrauterine cavity and you see it through the drainage port you might have to reinflate the balloon and keep it for a longer period of time another catheter that was already recommended by the who and was also very cost effective in relation to the bakri balloon uh, was the condom catheter see in the condom catheter we also require one suture to tie the condom at one end and it does not have any drainage port so there is a disadvantage of condom catheter in relation to the cg balloon also there can be some issues like if we tie the thread too tight there might, uh, we might not be able to inflate the balloon and if we tie the thread too loose there might be some leakages so cg balloon actually covers all those issues of the condom catheter also so this was all regarding the cg balloon and how much it is cost effective to manage your atonic pph so if you like my video please do like subscribe and share the channel love obstetrics and gynecology thanks for watching